Welcome to another episode of Acting Up Podcast. I am your boy, Cisco Reyes. Yeah, and I'm Malik Barnhart. Are you? <laughs> this guy has a whole audience in his pocket. <laughs> always got the crowd. The crowd is always with me. <laughs> yeah, he's just out there always down there clapping for him. He's got an ego. Clap for me. Clap for me. He puts it on during sex. <laughs> hey, listen, hey, how you know? What are you doing? I heard. Yeah, what is this guy doing? <laughs> but it's really just an audience of two. <laughs> what up, Cisco? What's going on, Malik? Oh, man. Oh, man. It's, it's a great day today. You yeah. know, a lot going on. I just wanted to touch on a couple things real quick if I could. Oh, you got your notepad out. Yeah. You know he just writes his name down. <laughs> Malik Burnhart. Burnhart. Burn. Gotta get it right. Burn. We gotta get it right. And then he turns to me and says, you know I got some questions for you. <laughs> you know, I, I keep that. You know what I mean? It just come to me. You know what I mean? Here and there. You know, I, I, Nick Cannon. Oh boy. I just wanted to touch on Nick Cannon really quickly because here's what I think. I think that Nick Cannon was in a position where he shouldn't have said anything. I think that he's helping more black folks than we know. You know, putting, putting, getting, these folks are putting their kids through college, you know, they're paying their bills, blah, blah, blah. He's doing the work. Females that don't have to strip. But a lot of times, when you don't get credit right away for doing the work, you want to show like, look, I'm all about our people. I'm all about this and that. He didn't have to say anything address any of that stuff I think it's, because it's he's not, doing the work it's not him not getting credit for the work he's always gotten credit for the work it's not getting cr- street cred that's what I'm talking he's about he's not getting street cred for being you know not not, not hood enough or whatever that is right, right. and so he felt like he needed to maybe school the people right educate the right. masses right. and you know I'm, I'm, I, went, I went to uh, you know a black college and there was always a cat on there on academic scholarship and he was cool as hell Next thing you know, he started reading "Behold the Pale White Horse" and and all the these ISIS papers. He, he, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and next thing you know, he was that guy. Right. Like, nah, my brother, you need to check yourself because <laughs> we are out here being slaughtered like lambs. Right. And, you know what I mean? And so, now he works at the post office. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, like, like, like the same dude. I love him to death. But you know, my man. You know, he's like, you know what? They teaching us the white man's. He got a he got a job at a black bookstore. And Mm -hmm. then he started reading a bunch of, you know, those books and those books. No, very educational. (laughs) What I'm I'm trying to say is he, when he found out what was really going on, he ditched everything. Instead of using what he still had Mm -hmm. and marrying it Mm -hmm. with what he learned, Mm -hmm. he threw that away. And then went that way, and then now he has nothing. Right, you right. Know, nothing more. And so, so in the same thing with with Nick, not necessarily that he thought he was throwing it away. He thought he was saying something positive, especially in the time that we're living in right now, mm-hmm. where you know, uh, uh, black history, black culture, and and everything that's going on needs to be heard and and learned. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. we don't, we haven't been taught it. Mm-hmm. So it kind of shot him in the self so shot himself in the foot so the lesson the moral of the story is, is that Jews run Hollywood don't say <laughs> too much less is more we love you yeah and, and, and <laughs> so so Tory Lanez he may be in a little jam I'm just gonna say that jam. I don't know Yo, allegedly t- t- Tory Lanez is in, is in peanut butter and jam <laughs> you know what I mean so we don't know hold your head up stay focused Look, that, you know, um, all I heard is that he shot you know shorty in the foot now, and and you know first of all did you say that? you allegedly alle- allegedly mm. I mean she said it oh, okay. she said it herself so I mean if, you, if you're gonna be the celeb you're gonna walk around packing. First of all, why are you packing? What, oh, what, I was what, born this way. I don't. I don't know. Like my father. I don't. I don't know. Why are you packing? He's uh, five three and one hundred and twenty pounds. Oh, he's okay, five but, three. But, 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 like she, she, she was in. The, he was in the car with her and her girlfriends. I mean, the only thing you should be packing is these nuts. I'm just saying. I mean, and then you end up. What could she have possibly done? 
to make you so mad. I don't know, but that, there that, has to be more to the story. We, to I can't really elaborate. I don't want to Nick Cannon myself. Can we? Is that a term now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Hey, I just want to be careful. You just don't talk about the, the the wonderful, beautiful, lovely Jewish people. That's that's only you love Jewish people. Come on, you know what I mean? Like just oh. don't do that, and and you won't Nick Cannon yourself. Now, I, we never touched on this, so I'll just say this really quickly. Yeah, one word, Danny. Um, <laughs> um. <laughs> Augustina, you should have kept your mouth closed, huh? Augustina. You should have kept your mouth closed. You know what? You remind me of the guy who messed up on uh, American, uh, uh, what was it? What was the singing contest? What is it called? Tragedy. What's the singing American, contest? American Idol. American Idol. Remember, the, remember, remember, uh, what's her name? What's her name? Uh, Paul Abdul. Paul Abdul was nice enough to let you come to a house, huh? And you want to tell everybody everything. What did he do for you? Nothing. Zero. <laughs> Young boys, when the old girls let you in the house, shut your mouth. Mind your business. Keep it closed. Zip. You know how right, many right, you know right. how many things I can tell you right now, but I won't. Cause I'm not right. a young boy. Yeah, that's so, all I want to say about yeah, that. Yeah, man. I mean, oh my God. come on, man. It like on. you know, you, that, that's one thing when when you when you're when you get that far into the circle of Hollywood, mm -hmm. you you don't kiss and tell. Never. You know what I mean, and. Uh, I don't know, you kiss. Unless mm -hmm. you've been abused. I mean, right. I guess, you know, that, that's, that's, all, that, that's a whole different story. Yeah. But, I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. First of all, anybody that knows about Will and Jada's private life, you know, that, that are privy to that kind of information, knows they, they can be kind of wild. Right. You know what I mean? Well, but, I wasn't that's, you're just not going to... Who's that? You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't talk. Oh, Damn, oh, that, 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 damn. People call see, no, that was Will and Jada right there. See, that's why you don't talk about these. <laughs> they that's, my point. that's my point. That's why you don't talk about these people. Because as soon, we're we're not even live. And right. That and was that, that right. was Will or that was Jada. No, I don't know. I would, we, we're gonna move away from that subject. <laughs> now, no, the, next but not last, I just wanted to say. <laughs> Kanye is very ugly when he cries. <laughs> that's all. Oh that's all I want to say. Oh my god, yo, this guy, this guy, really, this guy, Kanye. You like, look so ugly. <laughs> you cry. I almost killed my daughter. Like first of all, you know how many abortions I had? Can you look funny, you idiot? This is normal. What's wrong with you? We black. We do this. <laughs> yo, the ones that survive, we love them. What do you do? On the way Forget over. About it. On the way over in the car, they said that you see his new tweet. Uh, no, I didn't. He's been trying to to divorce Kim Kardashian ever since she met with McMill. Oh, that's right. I did hear that. By the way, that was money making Mitch. Our camera guy, yes, money yes, making like, Mitch. Yes, we never give a shout out. We open the yeah. show. You know what I mean? Money making Mitch that. behind the camera. We side got side guy. guy. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Side. <laughs> on, on the side, on the side. Talking that side shit. You know what I mean? And make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button below. Hit that reminder. Hit that bell. You know what I mean? And thank you for the, you know, all the support that you guys are giving us because it's a beautiful thing. That's why we're still here. That's why we're still doing it because we see that you guys are love, loving what we're doing. You know what I mean? So, you know, make sure you follow Malik Barnhart. Mm -hmm. At Malik Barnhart. Cisco Reyes. At Cisco Reyes. And at Acting Up Podcast. You know, but um, yeah, I, I definitely want to touch upon that, that you know. First of all, mm -hmm. like forget that his his opening presidential run was a disaster. And did he, he have a bulletproof a, vest on? He forgot to take. Why did he go to Iraq? He be, he, got, he had a bulletproof vest on, and and he forgot to take his 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 bipolar meds. And you know what I mean, like, and he definitely had an episode because I mean that dude. What he's doing right now is, is really a disservice to the presidential race because, yeah, I don't give a shit if you don't like Biden, but do you love Trump? You know what I mean? The whole point is just to get rid of him. Now, that was my whole point when I told people to vote for Hillary. It wasn't that I liked Hillary. I just didn't want Trump to win. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And look what happened. So when people say, yo, I'm not going to vote at all because I don't like neither one, well, just think, when you got... A, 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 a bunch of a million rednecks voting for Trump and you got a half a mil normal people voting for Hillary, of course he's going to lose. Right. He motivated his base. Well, I'll just say this. <clears throat> Listen, keep the dummy in office because I made the most money I've ever made in my whole life with the guy in office. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to rob nobody. Nah, 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 it, it, keep, let him do what he's doing. Because I don't know. of the pandemic or before the pandemic? Well, a lot of shit going on. I don't know. A lot of, there's a lot of things you can fill out for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Checks is coming. Right, right now. Right now. But I, but I feel like if, if this pandemic never happened, you know, I know a lot of people last year that was like, yo, 
This tax cut didn't I was struggling with Obama. I just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, let me keep it clean. I love him. He looks good. He can be my father. I don't know. But I, I was struggling with Obama. I said, God, white folks wouldn't even talk to me. It, it was nah, a fact nah, of the man. Uh-uh. No, I, I, I refuse to give him those props. You know what I mean? Because, you know, like, you, you didn't see his one, you didn't see his one tweet. Where he said, you know, slavery was the best thing that happened to black people. They 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 got employed. They had housing and free food. And <laughs> unemployment in black in, in America. Why are you doing Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? You didn't see that tweet. <laughs> it was a real tweet. He said, he's like, yo, black unemployment during slavery was at its lowest, like it is now. <laughs> <laughs> Trump, said Trump. Trump said that. <laughs> he did. The day they got rid of the Confederate flags, he was like, "This is terrible. The Confederate flag is a part of history. It, it, it's it's a symbol of love." Yeah. <laughs> He's like, "Black unemployment." <laughs> <laughs> that's your guy. That, hey, that's your guy. And they pass the checks around. Yeah. Listen, Cisco. You know, you know, we got guests today. We can't yeah. take up the whole show talking yeah, about yeah, Trump. Yeah, so I, I know, know how much you love him, and you, you know you want to fight him. You want to fight Trump. Yes. But if I if I if I ever had the chance to fight Trump, I would. Yeah, I, oh, I would definitely want to punch off his toupee. <laughs> okay, well you you're fighting with it. Ow. No, no, man. Like the little rascals. You ever seen that with that one? Pew. <laughs> okay, now when the, when the when the feds call or knock on the door, I, I don't know. <laughs> I never met the guy. Hey, hey, listen, whatever. Listen. If, you, if, if you're coming after acting up podcast, you know the first guy you're gonna find. He, yeah. he hikes, Side guy. He, <laughs> he hikes in, in white neighborhoods. <laughs> like, like I'm free, right? I hike in white neighborhoods. Like I'm free. What are you doing? What are you doing here? You know, you know what they think? The first thing the thing they see you. He ran away from the plantation. <laughs> <laughs> we found him. That's terrible. That's terrible. Listen, man. Cisco, we, we got a dope guest today. Yo, who, who we got, man? Man, we got a cool cat. We got a dope guest today, man. I, it's a pleasure to have him on. You know what I'm saying? This guy, I mean, this guy, this guy, he, he makes it all look easy. That's what yep. I was just going to say. He makes it all look very easy. And maybe it's easy for him. You know what I mean? And he does it in flip-flops. <laughs> he does with no socks or with black eyes on. Oh, oh, yeah, Yo, yeah. I thought you meant like he, he switches. No, you know, he, you know he, when he walks, he's flipping up. I think I think it's because he likes to let everybody know without saying it. He's grounded. That he's Haitian. No, oh, definitely, he definitely represents the Haitian he's community like, for sure. Don't, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. So who we got, man? So 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 yeah, we 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 and we. Got Got a good uh, man. I, 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 I mean, is it, is it my man that 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 was in Fresh back in the day? Oh, you know, yeah, it was Junior. No, he, he did that thing on he the court. He did that thing. He did that thing. He's a bad guy. You know what I mean? You know him from Fresh. You know him from Malcolm X, Dead oh. Presidents. Oh uh, man. Uh, 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 and that's the act. And, and that's as an actor. Yeah, that's, that's an actor. not even his his long, long, long that's resume. That's why we gotta hear his, as a director. That's why we gotta hear his story. How the hell are you getting these fuck, all these big movies doing your thing, and then you transition and you start to make your own movies? Now he he think of a role. He roll out of bed. He writes mm-hmm. it, and boom, they got the cameras mm-hmm. up the next day. They shooting it. Bong bong. I swear, it's just like that. I mean, well, I'll let him tell it because I don't know the whole story. <laughs> so you know, with with no further ado. Yeah. We got to bring my man to the, to the to the table, you know what I'm saying? Have him tell his story, because we want to know what's going on. Let's give it up. A big acting up round of applause for my man, Jean-Claude Lamar. Yeah. 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 Yo, Jay, what's up? Hey, man, I'm chilling, man. I'm just, y'all got me cracking up over here, bro. <laughs> we just do it. We just got to do a little Yeah, I like the vibe, man. Yeah, I like yeah, the vibe, yeah, bro. Yeah, man, we got you, we got you cool. some grapes, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Thank yeah. you for the grapes. <laughs> Thank you for the grapes. <laughs> You know, believe text me guys. They say, you know, you, you know, if you want, we can get you some fried chicken and stuff. I was like, nah, get some grapes, bro. We can get you some. <laughs> you want to keep it natural? Now, now, yeah, now did you deny the fried chicken just because well, it, it would have been stereotypical? No, I don't eat meat. I don't eat meat. I haven't. I haven't eaten meat in maybe about ten years. Maybe wow. about ten. Mm, that's wow. why he's so skinny. Chicken, I'm talking about chicken. Uh, meat, I haven't eaten in a long time. What about fish? None of it. I actually stopped fish maybe about a year and a half ago. Wow. About a year and a half ago. Wow. Yeah, and it's it's weird because you don't really miss it once you you once you stop. You so are you, you a know. total vegan? No cheese? No. Oh no no I'm not I'm not like I don't well, I don't, 
I didn't eat cheese before anyway. Really? Because I mean, it's just, it's just, I, I, I'm not a big dairy. Like I don't you drink milk. You speak French, patois, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And you don't eat cheese? <laughs> what the hell? Who is this guy? He's crackers and wine. <laughs> you, you, you know, it's crazy. The only thing, like I, I, I get you when, when you say you, you, you don't miss it anymore. Like if you get past like that first week or two, yeah, facts. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like a fast, yeah. o- almost. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that that you know, at least for me, that mm-hmm. I don't care if it's been a week or two or three or, or four months. You know, what I mean, I, I'll never like miss, uh, not want to have pussy. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't know about this. <laughs> I just say, there's no such thing. You're like, oh, like, I'm celebrating. Yeah, the first, the first, you know, the first week was hard. I don't celebrate no holidays. <laughs> I, I never do this the, the first year was hard. No, yeah, yeah, it was hard. The whole year, damn it. No, fuck that. <laughs> you know, I, I did, I did, I did give up sex for um, Lent, Lent one time. Oh, what a good guy. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was that was the hardest lens on <laughs> Hey, I gave it up for five years, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. He traded it in for something different. <laughs> it's okay. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you got some if you could have. <laughs> so, 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 Jay, real no. quickly, what, what what was your first role, and how did you get into acting? Um, first role. Oh, oh, I actually. Uh, went to a um went to a student um graduation exercise it was like a, a big graduation thing Medgravers College in Brooklyn and uh the keynote speaker at that particular commence, commencement exercise was uh Spike Lee mm. and so I had to give like a little address to the graduating class so I stood up and gave a little address and you know literally about two minutes and then when I went to sit back down in my seat, uh, Spike Lee, who was sitting behind me because he was the, the honored guest, and, and kind of tapped me on my shoulder. And he was like, hey, listen, he goes, uh, have you ever done any acting? And I was like, uh, no, no, no. He goes, uh, yeah, he says, you know, I really like the speech that you just gave. Uh, he says, I got a little movie that I'm doing. Um, <laughs> a little movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally, he was like, I got a little movie that I'm doing. Um, and I was like, what, what movie? And I had heard of him, obviously, uh, Do the Right Thing. He mm-hmm. had done that. Uh, Mo Better Blues, I think he had done that mm-hmm. by then. Wow. And then he said um, uh, Malcolm X. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I wasn't really interested <laughs> in acting. So for me, it wasn't. It was. Uh, I didn't jump on the opportunity at the time. So he, he gave me his card. He says, here, call this lady up. Uh, when you you know uh, uh, that later, uh, later, I found out it was Robbie Reed. Mm-hmm. So. So the commencement exercise is over. I'm on my way home. My sister, who was there with me, is in the car. And she goes, what was Spike Lee telling you on stage? And I said, oh, he's something about a movie or something. He's, she says, what movie? I said, oh, it's a Malcolm X. And he asked me to come audition. And she said, uh, what was the card? Where's the card? And I go, I, I don't know. I left it on the seat, I, I, you know. Right. And she, she was driving. She made a U-turn. What? Drove back. And when we got back, the cleaning people were actually cleaning because it was over. People were cleaning. And we went over to where I was sitting, and she found the, the card. Wow. And then uh, I think the next day or two days later, uh, uh, my sister, I, I actually called to find out where the auditions were because that's what he told me, go see this lady. I went down to Tribeca movie studios owned by Robert De Niro at the time and that's where they did all their casting out of New York <clears throat> and and when I got there security guard was like uh, yes I said oh uh, I met Spike Lee and, and he told me to speak to this lady here and so I have an audition or something and he goes yeah 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 it doesn't work like that um, we're not taking any submissions or anything I said mm. he told me to talk to her it, because you have to catch the elevator to the third floor. Right, right, right. right. You have to get in the building. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have to get in the building. <laughs> so, so he says, uh, and I turned to my sister who was with me, and I said, "This, like, this is stupid. Like, let's go." And she said, "No, no, 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 no. Call, call Spike Lee. Call him right now and tell him that you're here." I was like, so I called. She, she saw the. She, yeah, she saw. She, yeah, she, yeah, she yeah, saw yeah. I got to give her a lot of credit because I called. Assistant picks up. I said, hi, uh, can I please speak with Mr. Lee? <laughs> what do you call this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lee? And uh, she said, hold on, who's calling? I said, my name is Jean-Claude Lamar. I, I bumped into him. He told me to come see. And I'm in the lobby right now. So, so she says, hold on. He gets on the phone. 
And he says, uh, hello. I said, hey, we, you ran in. I was given the speech and you told me to. I'm here, but the lady doesn't. He says, oh, just call her. Just call her. Um, um, and I, I said, OK. So I hung up the phone and I called her. And he, I, said, I told the security, can you? He said, put her on the phone, sir. So, so, she, so Robbie comes on and says, I don't. Yeah. Who, who is this? I said, yes, yeah, Spy, I just got off the phone with me. He says, you, I need to come see you. And she was like, yeah, honey, just leave your head shot and, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll get back to you. <laughs> now, keep in mind, at the time, Malcolm X casting is a global event. Right. right? They're looking yeah. for this yeah. character, all the characters pretty much, from Chicago L.A. cast Brothers stepping New up York, right? Brothers is stepping yeah, Every yeah. Every in, actor In zoot suits yeah, Every actor in zoot suit. And That's the same hat He wore yeah, The same movie. hat Brother <laughs> As alaykum So um, like salam, right? So the reason So 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 she doesn't Let me up And then uh, We call Spike again And he says Hold on Calls her Let I go up I do a little reading she says, you have headshots? I was like, I don't know what that is. She says, okay, well, I need pictures, photos of you. I said, well, when I get home, I'll send you a... Went home, my sister again told me... Polaroid? Told me, no, she says, just put a little bow tie on. She says, put a little bow tie. <laughs> so I'm like, I got a little twin ball bow tie. Just trying to be, you know, Wait, like, I don't you, know. Your, your sister <laughs> is Kim Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> she became the biggest casting director in the business. <laughs> So, uh, you know, so I send the thing and, and a couple of weeks go by. I don't hear anything. So I just pretty much. Fail. And then they call me to come back and I go back. And this time this, she said, hey, we'd like to record you. And, and so she recorded me. And a couple of days later, Spike Lee. Uh, oh, oh, and another month goes by. And meanwhile, they're searching for this character all over the world, pretty much. And um, and uh, the third time. A month later, I hear from them, and I go back, and it was a reading with with Denzel, oh, and I'd never, I, you know, I was in school, so right. I'd never met a move. I'm from Brooklyn, right. Flatbush, Brooklyn. So right. I'm like, yo, I'm like, Denzel Washington is about to. I'm about this to reread. So my sister sitting right next to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> She's so like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, and then uh, we're sitting in the lobby, and the, the elevator opens into the lobby. And as we're waiting, elevator doors open, and and Denzel comes walking out of the the elevator. It was the first time I actually like he 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 at the time. I mean, I haven't seen Denzel in years, but I mean. Bonafide movie star. Right. I mean, he was six three or six four. Right. He was good looking guy yeah. with the man. He had the little backpack on with the. And keep in mind, this is nineteen ninety one. Right. There was like six black working actors. Right. In the, the world. Thing. Right. And he's one of them. Right. Two of them. Yeah. Two of them with Right. 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 So it, it was it's just. Cool. Yeah. So it was a huge <laughs> event to wow. see this guy. You know. Up close, so I go in, uh, and um, they call me. I, you know, I go in and, and do my reading with him, and in the middle of the reading, Spike Lee turns to Denzel and says, "D, um, go off book. Just, just improv with him. Just go." And at that exact moment, and you know, when people talk about when people talk about moments mm -hmm. and opportunities, mm -hmm. and be ready for it, right? Um, I had nothing to lose at that point. So I was just right. like, I didn't even expect to be this. That's my fourth callback. And now right. I'm sitting in front. I pretty much, in my mind, if it ended there, I was good. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. It's, like, it's like, Brooklyn, when I get off the train, they're going to rob me. <laughs> right. like, do this shit. You're going to I don't know. I know right pretty much. Pretty much. Or go get a beef patty and cocoa. Yeah, <laughs> cocoa break straight up. <laughs> um, and uh, I ate meat at the time. Yeah, so I was <laughs> ready for that. So, so, I, so we go off book and we just kind of, you know, I played his protege, sort of young, uh, idealistic young guy in the movie. And so I just played that and, and we just went back and forth and it was over and uh, made my way to, back to the lobby. said, thank you. Made my way to the lobby and I get to the elevator. My sister's like, how'd it go? How'd it go? I'm like, oh, it's cool. Elevator doors open. I go in. And I'm um, like, I'll tell you downstairs, you know, so I hit the thing. And then Spike Lee, before the doors close, runs up and 
Wait a minute. Hold right. on, hold on, hold on, wow. hold on. He said, come here for a second. I said, yeah. He goes, uh, what, are you, what are you doing in the fall? And at the time, I'd planned on going to law school. So I was like, oh, I'm going to school. I'm going to, going to law school. I'd already gotten accepted. And I was like, I'm going to law school. And he was like, uh, um, someone wants to tell you something. And uh, so we walk back in the room. And I walk in the room. I'll never forget this. I walk in the room. And Denzel, whose back is to me, I walk. I go around the chair. And he's got the little post-it stick, the little stick, sticky thing. Uh, stuck to his forehead and with the words you got the part on oh, it right yeah. there yeah yeah, yeah. That so is dope. it was oh pretty God. dope it was pretty dope oh, wow. yo we gotta dope. give it up for that yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. it was pretty dope it was a go yeah. what did that feel like <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you know it's funny cause by that point like I said by that point just getting that far and just meeting and the whole thing it, it almost seemed like, uh, you know, that question is like you're in a boxing ring mm -hmm. and uh, you're getting pummeled, right, for eight rounds. Mm -hmm. And then the ninth round, you get knocked out. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't really ask, hey, how did it feel, the knockout? Nigga, right. I was getting my ass whipped the whole right, time. Right. I, I, there's, no, there's, no, there's no moment where... Or, like, or you was getting pummeled for eight rounds, and then you just said, fuck it, it took one punch, and then you knocked him out. Like, how did it feel? <laughs> right, right, right. I don't know. I just, right, right. right. But, but, but in this case, what my, my point is that I pretty much had... It, 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 I had. It was through the gauntlet. It was so cool. Was yeah, punch drunk. I was already right. punch drunk right. by that right. point. Yeah. So, so you know, when I got that knockout punch, it was just kind of like, oh, okay, it's just part of what I was excited, obviously, but um, but um, I was wowed from the very beginning mm. of the of the thing. But, but I. But who's I, what, the first what, person you told? My sister. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was there. Who's the first person you like? Do music. <laughs> I just got um, my roommate at the time because I went home obviously and I had a roommate. I told him, uh, and what did then he say, did he believe you? Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but but also keep in mind, Brooklyn is like a, a is like a incubated community. So. And niggas didn't even really understand the, the <laughs> right. what that meant. Show. Like this, right. yeah, right. They didn't really understand. Like, but that's also how you didn't understand when when Spike taps you on the shoulder. And let me tell y'all something. Like for Spike, the, the minute Spike taps you on the shoulder, that was huge. And Spike doesn't, you know, you can yell fire or or duck. They shooting. Spike ain't gonna turn around. <laughs> One hundred and fifty percent. Until he sees somebody drop dead. One hundred and fifty percent. They serious. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I've seen some of the most amazingly beautiful, gorgeous women go up to Spike and be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, great, yeah." yeah. I'm an actress. You know, like Spike doesn't like. One hundred fifty percent. That. One hundred fifty percent. This whole Spike Lee commercial, uh, not commercial, with Spike Lee story. He cried. He cried at no, me. No, no, actually, that was you. Oh, really? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you won't even talk about it. I can bring No, but that's a good point, though. That's yeah. a good point. I mean, he's, right. yeah, I would not got to know him a lot better he's very monosyllabic not a very expressive or emotionally attached guy um so you're right from that he, the he fact saw that something he, in you yeah, absolutely from the jump street absolutely right. you know what absolutely. i mean and then if you were actually pursuing acting you probably would have known what that meant right but since right you, but and probably and since you, you worried that was the alarm it, it is exactly right, right. you know, like right. and, and usually it's it's, the, it's those people who are like yeah i i don't even know about this man right. <laughs> so, right. and, 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 meanwhile me and malik Right, 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 right. Please give me a dollar. Come on, I, can do it. I know you got 15 more minutes. You can just see me. I, I'll say my lines quick. <laughs> and speaking of which, I'm glad you said that because I want to kind of like uh, transition to Basquiat. Mm -hmm. And me and Caesar was just talking about Basquiat offset, um, and, and I was telling him that Basquiat, the reason why he was so sought after is because he acted like he didn't give a fuck. Facts. He was like, he was like, oh, he was like the Jimmy Hedges right. of, of art. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> it was more, he was he was interesting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and you can even tell in his art. 
Yeah. And he didn't give a fuck. Oh, no, right. now. And 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 it, and it was Maybe. it was them because art is subjective. There was a lot of it science. Was them that was art, like, though. Oh my gosh. No, but there was a lot of detail in science's art because when he was a kid, you know, he was in the car accident. His and while he was in the hospital healing for months, his mother gave him a book of anatomy, an anatomy book. He studied that book from A to Z. That's why all his shit is skeletons and this and that. The body. Mm-hmm. It's very deep. It's not. It's it's not whatever. Yeah, yeah. And everybody knew that, and he played it to the hill. He played it well. Right. Maybe he gave a fuck, right. and he didn't. Right. But so speaking, of, speaking of which, they just got the stolen painting that he that, that there, there's a painting of his that got stolen. Oh wow! And it's worth like three hundred million or something whoa, like that. Whoa. And, and they just got it back. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. You know, I, it's funny uh, the Basquiat story. You know, um, so fast forward, Malcolm X, fresh, but but fast forward. Quite fresh. Um, OG Bobby. <laughs> Wait, that's OG Bobby, OG Bobby Johnson. Right? No, that's, no, that's South Central. That's, 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 that's South Central. But Fresh was a little kid. Fresh is Just dope. Yeah, Fresh is dope moves. Ill because yeah. he played everybody. Yeah, Fresh yeah, dope moves. Um, yeah, that was a that was a good one. Um, but uh, but uh, but uh, Basquiat. Uh, I get a call from my agent at the time. You know, fast forward, I, I have an agent now, and mm-hmm. the whole shebang. He's and, with CEA, and yeah, it was, I was, I think, innovative <laughs> artist. Um, and I get a phone call, and my agent says to me, "Listen, there's a, a, a guy who's transitioning from painting and art um, into directing, and he's a very big uh, commercial artist." And I was like, who? He's like, his name is Julian Schnabel. Very, very big in the art world. And he wanted to do, and he used to be really good friends with um, um, Basquiat. And Mm -hmm. he now is going to do the Basquiat story. And they want you to, he's going to be doing a a, a reading at his house. And he wants you um, to read the title role. And I was like, are they shooting the movie? He says, no, no, this is just a reading he's doing. So at the time, I'm working a lot. You know, and uh, I've just finished doing, uh, I've done Fresh, I've done a bunch of episodics, and uh, you, you I was- at this point, at this point right, right here, yeah. you don't even talk to extras. At this I, point, you don't talk to extras. I always talk to extras. Saying, <laughs> I always talk to extras. <laughs> <laughs> I always talk to extras. <laughs> 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 it went from, what does that mean? I don't talk to me. I don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it depends, it depends on how hot and cute they are. Right, right, right. Hey. So, so <laughs> I, um, so, uh, I get the call, so I'm in the middle of shooting Dead Presidents, and um, I get this, but I, but but the reading is the same time, the same day. I got, a, I had a little brief hiatus. I got to fly back to Orlando to finish with the Hughes brothers, and so I got my car uh, downstairs, and I go upstairs, and I walk into this warehouse. This guy, he he had he had turned this firehouse into his living quarters and studio and wow. the entire firehouse. So it was like, you know, something like a, you know, 10,000 square foot. And, and, and that's, that's, that's New York. That's New York. Right. That's, in, that's New York for you. New York, right? Wow. So, so he, and he's in like Soho and it's, right, it's, right. so I walk in, I'm like, shit, this, it looks, it looks real gothic. I mean, the doors are like, you know, mm. so I, I now whose firehouse was this? He bought it, Julian Schnabel, the okay, the, Julian the, the, Schnabel. The, okay. the the artist right. who's now transitioning to it was New York to, firehouse. Right. Now it's his. So, right. wow. <laughs> so I walk in and the table reading is a table like this, huge long table. All the actors are there. I show up late, and they give me the script. They were waiting for me. Sitting at the table is um, is uh, at the time. Uh, Madonna, uh, um, uh, uh, the top artist. You said the, Madonna, everybody. Yeah, yeah, the, the, everybody. Frank Sinatra, Bob Hope, every, everybody. everybody. I want to hear the rest of the names you're Christopher, about to say. Christopher Walken, wow. um, uh, Benicio del Toro. Uh, oh, but, my cause, God. Because he, because he was this artist, mm-hmm. um, people, it's, he was like the ditty of. Of, yeah. of, of art, art. of yeah. art. So yeah, yeah. all of these top you know, talent came out, and there's this one. There's like two people on there you know, sitting at the table who were not really well known. No one really knew it. They looked like they were just extras reading. You know that because they were reading just the uh, uh, the uh, footnotes. Man number one, right. man right. number right. two, yeah. oh, okay. stuff like that in the script. Malik. And then it, and then it was me. <laughs> and then it was me. Um, so I'm reading the title role. Totally didn't know who Basquiat was. 
just knew he was artist. And the reason they reached out to me was because I was Haitian of Haitian background. Uh -huh. and um, so I'm reading this thing and I'm reading, and all I'm thinking about is my car's downstairs. I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I'm, I'm like, I gotta hurry up and just, so I'm reading really fast and not really giving much attention. The guy who's reading, one of the guys who's reading also was a little annoying because as he's reading, he's putting everything on, like man number one, you know, he's like, so I'm uh, real, real thespian like and right. real putting a lot of um, uh, theatrics into his reading. Anyway, make a long story short. They told me, all right, great, we're done, um, thank you, I leave, fly to Orlando. A week and a half later, my agent calls me in and says, hey, we heard from the folks, they got the money to make the movie. Right. I was you like, oh, cool. read like so I'm that. Like, all you gotta do awesome. is tape the tape. I'm like, read. awesome. Great. By the way, sorry, sorry guys. The dog you hear barking, that's our guard dog. Yes. And yes. he must be tearing into somebody's ass who's trying <laughs> yes. to break into this studio right now. Because so this, this is called <laughs> this is called <laughs> acting up. So it would be. I don't know. I don't know. So so leave her inside, please. So um <laughs> um. Where was I with the story? Oh, so so they got um, the money. They got the they money. got the money to make Most the movie. They got the money to make the movie. So I go, okay, great. So when are they gonna make an offer? You know, I'm, you know, it says, oh, they also said that, you know, they're not gonna go with you. What? <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, what the fuck? Why do I have this phone call right now? <laughs> they're like, what? I was like, wait a minute. What do you mean they're going, man? Like, Impossible. they're like. <laughs> They're like, no, no, not you. I was like, okay. Um, but he goes, but the guy, the, the director liked you. He liked you, but he just doesn't think that you were really vested in the role when we caught. I said, all right, okay. And he says, but they want to offer you a small supporting part. I was like, all right, cool. All right, no problem. I said, by the way, who got the role? They're like, oh. You remember the kid who was sitting there who was reading, putting everything into the role in Wimbledon? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, it was a young guy named Jeffrey Wright. Oh he was a new God. guy. He oh, hadn't done anything. Wow. Right. And he got the role. And, and that, that, that's a note, people. Yeah. Understand this because I've been to table reads where you know an actor is reading. You know he may maybe he got shot all in, the time. In, in the scene, yep. And yep. that that actor that's reading, he gets shot. <laughs> Pass me the etiquette. When you do a table read, don't think that you just got the job. It's like, right. oh yeah, so yeah, I just got right, shot. Right. Oh yeah, I got it. Bah, 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 bah. Don't be too cool. Make sure you enunciate toy boat. Yeah, so That's correct. That is correct. John Claude is a living proof. I'm no, living proof. No, but, 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 you know, better yet. I was casualty. <laughs> better yet, Jeffrey Wright is living proof. Cause correct. <laughs> correct. You gotta bring that up. Come on. 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 Two words that he just getting crazy about. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, Let's not bring that up. Right? Nah, but but real talk is like you know I, I've I've had comments on both ends where it's like you know I mean I go in there and I always try to give it my all and and I've had people in. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah. Well, you really love this show, huh? Sister? Yeah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go back to show where you can show hosting. Technical difficulties, people. <laughs> hey, he's about to get deep just now. Yeah. There's, uh, there, there, there's been times where I've got, you know, I've, I've gave it my all and, you know, other people are like, yo, it's just a table read, Cisco. Right, right. Relax. Right, right. You know what right, I mean? Right. But I don't know how, you, like, like you, my whole thing is, if this is, like, I, I want to see how you going to play the role. That's right. right? That's you know exactly I mean? correct. Just because it's called a table read doesn't mean you got to just be reading That's if you right. saw on the part for the, just, for the very first time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I've seen people that are just like, hey, it's just a table read. I'm just going to, yeah, whatever. So, yes, uh, where are you going tonight, Malik? <laughs> it's like right. you know mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. like is it and you'd be thinking in, my, in the back of my head I'm like is this how they're gonna is this how right. they're gonna say the wrong right. Right. and you know in, in their in, you know maybe in their mind they're like this is just table read and you, you gotta know? remember producers the writer is there they want to hear right. this, this. This. They want to hear these words come to life. Right. So you got to right. bring some energy, right. some life into it. Ev uh, everybody's at a table read. Right. And even if you already got the part, and and you play it so, you play it down. It, it, next thing you know, when they, you, you might the, not be down. You, you, you got the rewrite <laughs> pages, right. and you're right. like, wait. Wait a minute! Yeah, what happened to what happened to all my lines? Right, <laughs> right. Like, now, now, and, that, and that's that's. Uh, I'm glad you said that because 
that brings me to my next question. And that is one of transitioning. Now, because Hollywood and making Hollywood movies, I mean, I was in 8 Mile, I got, you know, I mean, you know. I mean, you don't know the story, but I'm going to tell you that story soon. Hmm. But, you know, no, of how I got, you know, of how I didn't get, get paid and get residuals. Oh, that episode. Uh, we never did that episode because I, I, I went up to the ceiling, I crawled the walls, and I went crazy. So, we're going to scrap that because we don't want to do that. Remember that other guy, the other thing. You don't want to Nick Cannon yourself. <laughs> no, but I will tell you that story soon enough. But that's my question, Zero Claude. It's like, like Hollywood and the Hollywood game. It's it, it's a it's a real game. It's not a joke. It's not a funny game. It's just a game, a, a monop, a game of monopoly. What was there something that made you say, okay, I have an agent. I did. I worked with Spike Lee. I worked with the Hughes brothers, so on and so forth. You know what? I want to put pen to pad, and I want to I want to I want to try my hand at producing, directing. Like, what was there something that made you do that, or it was just? You just say, you know, I want to try this. Mm -hmm. Like, were you frustrated at the base? That's like, a yeah. that's a that's a very good question. That's a very good question, actually. Um, you know, every actor has. Um, keep in mind the context and what we're talking about. You know, I have had the privilege and the benefit of seeing many incarnations and in different different versions of Hollywood different versions. And what I mean by that is, um, as technology has developed, the business has developed. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen a monopoly broken into pieces mm. and people's behaviors have to shift accordingly. Mm. Okay, what do I mean by that? Um, when you are in the 1990s, 1993, when there were six black working actors. Two were Denzel. Yeah, and two were Denzel. <laughs> um, there was a certain arrogance that the industry has. Yeah. They are kingmakers, they can dismiss people, they can move. As the indie market started to boom, that power sort of begins to shift and people now, right? Although money for most people still were, was an obstacle, right? Mm -hmm. Because my first film uh, I shot on 35 millimeter uh, that was higher ed than I had to shoot um, uh, uh, Go For Broke on mm -hmm. 35 and I had to buy short end canisters mm -hmm. because they were, we were actually using film at the time, right. right? I had to buy short ends so I could get the budget. You no, know, I spent $450,000 on my second film. And so, for, you, uh, for, for you guys that don't know what short end is, so so when big studios used to buy their big canisters of film, it's what's ever left over. Right. The short ends. The short ends, you know? right. And so in indie filmmakers, you know, they get it into Kodak. That's how, that's you right. know, shout out to Dale Stelly. That's mm -hmm. how he did a lot of his mm -hmm. films on right. film. You know right, I mean? right. And, and so as the digital revolution began, then now it became less expensive to shoot a movie and more people now had the power to shoot a film. Ah. So the industry also had to make a shift. For me... My transition from acting started even before I decided I was going to direct. It started because I became, um, I became a difficult actor. Mm. No one ever told me that. I acknowledge that. Right? Can, I, can, you, I, can, you, can you explain what you mean by that? I was in the set of Basquiat. Uh, I think it was day, maybe my second week on set, where I locked myself in my trailer. It was a Sunday, I remember, because they couldn't reach my agent. Oh. And I had some gripe about something. I'm like, I'm not coming out. Fuck y'all. I'm not coming out. By then, I had done tons of movies. I was, but what was happening, and I hadn't realized this, was I was unhappy. And so because I was unhappy, creatively, mm. I was now, a, I, I, I found maybe four or five years, I'm a part of someone's project. I'm a piece of someone's puzzle, someone's creative puzzle. I'm a piece of that. My spirit wasn't being, you know, as I show up on right. set, you give me sides, I sit there off afternoon and I got to wait eight hours before someone knocks on so I can go out and say one line. Then I'm on a, on a, on an episodic where, you know, I'm playing the same character. I played on New York Undercover that I did on Law and Order. That, that, and not look, 
I'm enjoying it. I'm, right. I'm liking it. I'm making money. But right. there's a part of me creatively because I'm finding myself gradually becoming more and more temperamental, more and more difficult. Mm. Telling people, man, fuck you, you can't tell me shit. Nah, fuck that. Nah, all right, fire me. You know, like, I almost had a fight. I had a fight with, I had a fight with the Hughes brothers. Like, you and Pac, huh? Fit, like, <laughs> <God damn. laughs> I, I, it wasn't a fight fight, but it was like, I remember he called me later that night in my hotel room in Orlando. He goes, listen, if we weren't so deep into this, I would have fired you today. Uh, me and Chris Tucker almost fought. I fought. I fought I, on on uh, what? Oh, it was also the same movie. Um, Dead President. Yeah. Dead President. Mm. I actually fought Eddie Griffin on Walking Dead. What? On Walking Dead. <laughs> um, uh, I can see that. I can, I can I, get that. Yo, listen, niggas was out in the He's woods for six right. months. <laughs> I mosquito bites all in my ass. I didn't. Want, don't joke with me, bro. I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> don't try your comedy on me. So, like so yeah. <laughs> so, Flatbush. it was, yeah, it was so, <laughs> but I found myself becoming more and more, and I remember my agent called me at one point and said, why are you doing this? Mm. He says, you're talented, you can, as an actor, you know, mm -hmm. you're talented, but people want to work, but you're, you're, you're getting a rep, you're starting to be difficult. Wow. Mm. And so, I get this HBO gig, I fly out, to uh, Ghana, uh, this is 1998, to shoot this big HBO movie uh, called Deadly Voyage. Mm. It's actually on YouTube now. You oh, can I know this right, for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah, Omar, Omar Epps, yeah, yeah Adewale, sure. right. Chewy, oh Chewy, yes. Chewy yes. Tell. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. I go and I'm, I'm filming in, in this day like day, uh, we, we spent two months out there. And then we went to London to finish out uh, the film for another month. But while I'm in, while I'm in Ghana, I'm in my hotel, I, I'm on set, and I'm sitting down, and uh, I, they, they tease me to this day about it, because I used to smoke this pipe. And so I'm sitting in the, in the uh, on set, and I'm putting tobacco in the pipe. Like Popeye? <laughs> <laughs> like Popeye. <laughs> yeah, like Popeye, man. And I got, and I got the long, long African gown on, right? <laughs> so I'm watching these guys, and... Uh, uh, Danny Glover is executive producing, and Danny's talking to the director. He was he was the executive producer of the, of the project, and I'm watching him. And it was literally that moment. And by the way, that sh that movie that was the most money I ever made on a film. Mm. And I got to pipe and I'm there, and I get this almost epiphany like it was just literally I remember that's why I say it's a good question because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know when that transition I remember that moment where I was like okay I want to do that like I don't I don't want to do this anymore you know I don't want to be on this side I don't want to act and if I am going to act it's going to be in a more because because here's the thing and I, and I and you have to be real with yourself right and and the, and the conversation I had in my head was you're never going to be Denzel. You're never, no one's gonna come knocking and say, hey, listen, we want you to be Julia Roberts' love interest <laughs> right. in the right. next one. Right. Not going Negative. to happen. <laughs> right. So, you're always going to be the bridesmaid, you're always gonna be the, 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 the kid next door, the homeboy, or the kid. Hey guys! You're right, hey, hey guys! <laughs> you know, you get shot. But I, I, and I, and I remember thinking, like, you are in a creative position that is almost powerless. Wow. And keep in wow. mind, yeah. prior to my artistic journey, I was going to law school. I was involved in student politics when I was in college. I, I'm, I, you was somebody. Yeah, I was somebody. You know? <laughs> so, no, but I, I, I really felt like I was not utilizing the full extent of my uh, uh, capacities, mm. creatively, intellectually, all of that. Mm -hmm. So... That moment, I was like, okay, cool. You know, you're gonna make a couple of bucks acting in little movies and stuff like that. But you know what? You you, you can write and you can mm. talk in 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 a more informed, from a more informed position. So I went and I started writing a script. I went home, just just started writing, and um, a year later, uh, a year later, I got the financing. Oh no, a year later. A friend of mine won the New Jersey State Lottery. 
good friend of mine. <laughs> oh, that's one nice. of the New Jersey Sounds State like lottery. A great friend. Yeah, one the, <laughs> and he gave me seven hundred thousand dollars. He won seven wow. million. He gave me seven hundred thousand dollars wow. to go make the movie. To go make the movie that I'd written, um, and that's what started. My 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 journey as a writer director. Well, that'll then, motivate you. Shit, how's this yeah. go? Yeah. Man, will you hurry up and win the lottery? Yeah. 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 Come on, yeah. money making yeah. Mitch, can you win the lottery, yeah. man? Yeah. Yeah. That is great. Yeah, yeah. You gotta play yeah. to win. That, that, that's, and so, what was the first movie? Uh, it was called Bricks. It's called Bricks. It had it starred Michael Wright. Oh. At the time, we'd just gotten oh. off of Five Heartbeats, so I was wow. I was geeked. Um, uh, it starred, uh, you know, the brother of uh, Sal in the in a do right, the right, right thing. Right. Okay, like, right. you know, that, that, yeah, guy, that guy, yeah. he was in it. Mm. Um, and, you know, it was it was a cool urban story, um, and uh, and from there I. Uh, I came, so it was around, nine, it was 2000, and then I caught a flight to LA to come to try to sell it, sell the movie. And then when I got here, hooked up with a production company that um, hired me to write a script, then I wrote another script, and another script, and then I just started like, you know, just started kind of realizing that the same amount of energy you can put into trying to do a, and, and that's why this, and remember I said there are different versions of Hollywood, like this version right here, this version mm -hmm. is the version that I was on, but on an island, like by mm -hmm. myself. Right. I, I was doing this right. back then mm -hmm. because, and what I mean by this is, I didn't, I never looked at the business, I never, I never looked at success in a traditional way. For me, I want to make move. I want I want to be an author. And then you go write a book. You're an author. Mm, yeah. Right. And guess what? You you walk down the street, you sell it to one guy, you're a selling author. You just yeah. sold a book. Wow. Right. And right. and for wow. me, wow. I don't ever have to sell another book to consider myself you accomplished it. I, I did that. Right. I, I I don't I don't need to be in a New York Times bestseller. I don't need to that those are not my, that's not what success is for me. So when I was making my little movies, and we talk about joking yeah, about that all right, the time, right, right, right. I'm like, yo, yeah, wait, what you doing, Jay? I'm just working my little movies. <laughs> and little guess movies. what? That little movie, those little movies, I've, you know, I sat down with my accountant uh, maybe about six, seven months ago. And it was just like, yo, but let's just look at like all these little movies and all this, blah, blah, blah. blah. And <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you exactly what the number is, Come but on. it is. Yeah. You say with the lottery one, yeah, right, 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 right. Because right. oh, that wasn't my money. I want to hear. I want to hear that. What did you say? What was it? No, millions, millions. Wow. But I didn't see it when I was making them. When I was doing it, it were small little straight to DVD blockbuster movies, little Christian movies that I was making, little women call it. And, and would you take it. what you made and just flip it and put it back into another movie? No, I never did that. I never did that because, well, actually, yeah, I, every now and then. Every now and then, I, you know, if I got an extra 50 Would you spend your own money on your films or did you always find OPM? Always found people to put money in them. Always found people. But, OPM, but, but, other people's but, money. But, 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 that, but that never stopped me from every now and then if I had to throw in some money. Uh, you know, the first movie I did, I don't know if you were in that one, Malik, uh, Sugar Valentine? No. Well, you've, okay. Um, I, I, somebody, I just got in here, somebody told me, yo, there's a guy who owns a chicken waffle spot, right, named Roscoe, whatever his name is, and I was like, oh, word, so I, I just hung out in front of Roscoe's, and one day he said, that's the owner right there, I said, is his name Roscoe, there's no there, his name's Herb, I said, what yeah. the fuck, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he came walking Herb's in, he came walking in, I said, hey, excuse me, sir, can I talk to you for a minute, like, what, I said, hey, I'm a filmmaker, but I'm always like, yeah, yeah, listen, kid, come back mm -hmm. tomorrow, so Down I came back tomorrow, sat down, waited for him, he walked by me like five times, just then even ignored me. I was like, all right, cool, I'll just wait. I didn't let my ego, I keep it in check. Came back and said, all right, what is it? I said, hey, I got this movie I want to do with my wife. He said, all right, cool. He said, all right. all right. He said, meet me here on Thursday. It was like a Tuesday. He said, meet me on Thursday, and then uh, I have that for you. I, I was only looking for 10 grand, and... He showed oh, up. Oh, oh, see, I thought you were going to ask him to like to shoot in his location. You no, were asking for, no, for no, no, no. I, I, I was just like, 
Because you know what? From a Tuesday to a Thursday, he sells $10,000. <laughs> yeah, he sells, he sells, he sells, a, whole he sells a whole lot of chicken. He sells a whole lot of chicken. He sells a whole lot of chicken. Right. Whole lot of chicken. Wrong press is $10. He sells Yeah, number three. He's a whole lot of chicken. Poor boy special. So so he came in in a little bag, a little bag. He just gave me $10,000 in cash. It was just like, go, go make... Go make the movie. Wow. Um, so no I've always. I, wait, wait, wait. No paperwork? No, none. Wow. None, none. And that's what I try to tell people like, black folks are definitely sticklers for a piece of paper, like, you know, like a slave. Right. You need the thing around your neck right. to know you're a slave. Well, no. You asked me for a contract yesterday. No. <laughs> you asked me for a contract yesterday. You're right, you're right, you're right. No, but, but because I've seen so many stories where people been in business, like Allison and Chains. His manager, they've been in business over 40 years, never had one piece of paper. And they made right. millions. But, that, but, but, but that, can, that, that can shoot he you in the foot. He didn't know this man. Right. Mm-hmm. But he, he didn't know friends. this man from Adam. He met him three times. But just he like Spike Lee, he's seen, he seen some I, I, I was about to say that. 95% of the movies I've made, I've made in my career are about over, oh, I would say over 75 films. Not a single production company, and none of it my money. But not a single production company have I gone to to pitch a movie, ask for money for a movie, has ever given me the money because of the movie. People give you money because they believe in you. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 right, right, they, 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 they. He looked at me because I, I can tell you right now, some of the movie ideas I have, if I give it to somebody else and say, "Yo, go ask that dude for some money," he'd be like, "Nah, we, we're, we're <laughs> nah, good, bro, cool. we're like, good." Like, like, so the presentation, people have to believe that. Look, man, okay, I'm looking at him. I don't really think he go. He don't look like he's trying to swindle us. <laughs> um, it's a decent idea. I think there might be some money to be made here. Um, John, what do you think? You know what? Let's go. Let's go. Let's let's go for it. And that pretty much is is what my experience has been. And, and, and to your and to your credit, I have to piggyback on that and say that years later, I've seen Herb around. You guys stayed in business. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And you know, he's turned out to be a good friend. I've known wow. him for years and stuff. Do you get free chicken? Uh, I used to. <laughs> well, you, you know, and, and maybe you, you can't a- a- answer this, but you, you can if you want to. What the hell, man? These white people are everywhere. Um, <laughs> You're in America. <laughs> they just pop up on your phone. They're like, we're listening. They're going to um, uh, Nick Cannon somebody. <laughs> he gave you 10 grand. How much did you give him back? You know what's funny? That movie never made money. It never made money. Was he, well, obviously he wasn't. Was, was he, I mean, how, how did, how, how did uh, he take that? Oh, and that's the other thing, right? Um... If if I go to a someone and ask him to invest in a movie, um, you have to believe that there's a risk that you're not going to make your money back, mm-hmm. and you have to be all right with that. What about the seven hundred thousand? Did he make it? Did, were you able to take care of him? The who? The lottery, your buddy. Oh yeah, he made his money. He made his money. Um, but but I would say my batting average as far as recoupment of of, of monies. Uh, and I've made movies again from ten thousand dollars to five million dollar movies. Uh, I'm 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 comfortably at about like a ninety six percent return rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, at, keep in mind, at the time that I was doing what I was doing, not a lot of people were doing it. Yeah. You know, the market now now you know it's great. Like I VOD? said, no, it was straight to video. There was no VOD at the time. Like oh. Nothing, oh, okay. nothing was digital. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing was digital. You know, it was all, you know, you, you just, you still had HD and you still had, I mean, uh, you still had, um, it was all standard def, right. right. And so, so, you know, keep in mind, I'm going to a guy and what I would always do, and which I think served me well, was I would always work a little bit. Listen, most people walk into a scenario and they're going to ask you for some money and they'll say, hey, listen. Uh, this cup right here costs, you know, ten dollars to make. Okay, I need ten dollars to make this, and I'm going to ask you to, you know, put the ten dollars in. I would go to you and say, "Listen, this costs ten dollars to make, but I can make it for seven. Hmm. 
I'm going to make this for seven. And the reason I walk in that way is because I always got to consider you, right? Mm -hmm. It minimizes my risk, right? But it also puts you in a more comfortable place to invest, right? Mm -hmm. So could I have made that? He gave me 10 grand. I probably could have gotten 50 from him. But I wasn't interested in getting 50 from him, right? Because if it didn't work, I don't want to owe you 50 grand. Right. Because you're going to come after me for the 50. Right. The 10, you'll go, all right, cool. Uh, I get it. That's, that's two uh, days of chicken. I, I, I get it. Right. right. That's two days of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. So, so it's, it's been an interesting journey wow. as far as that is concerned. Um, but yeah, I do remember the exact moment, though, Malik, where I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I don't really want to do that anymore. And now, can I, can I ask you, um, and, and that's going back to... Bricks is the name of the first Bricks movie? was the first one. Yeah. First movie. So did anybody mentor, like, did you reach back out to Spike? Did did you reach out to anybody to, to mentor you through your filmmaking career? No, no, no. Because I, because I, I, again, remember, you know, um, I'm, I'm an actor, but I'm, I'm really deep inside wanting to be able to do more creatively. Right. So when I go on a film set, the eight hours that I spent on that film set, the reason I was getting frustrated is because I'm not allowed to go talk to the camera guy. I'm not allowed to go talk to the sound guy. Right. I'm not allowed you to- You talk to the camera guy. Uh, well, well, yeah, right, right, here. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. But I'm saying, you couldn't do that back then, right? right? That's not your lane, right. right? You're seen as obstructive, you're seen as meddling. Like, what are you, what's the yes. actor yes. guy yes. doing? Yes. Right, right, what are you doing there? Right, right. <laughs> right. what are you doing there? So, so what I would do is observe. Mm. Right. And I looked at it and I was like, okay, so I need a camera guy, I need a sun guy, I need the lighting, okay, cool. Wonder, okay, cool, all right. And I'm absorbing all of this. So first movie, I'm like, okay, this is what I gotta do. And keep in mind, I'm in a different lane. Yeah. I'm not trying to be Spike Lee. Right. I don't, I'm not particularly looking for my, and that's the other thing too, right? You know, at the time, I'm like, where is my lane of opportunity? If I'm gonna sit here and try to, you know, and that's the other thing too, right? People look at, look at uh, opportunities, but don't identify where their what, what the lane is that'll provide them with that opportunity. I always looked at that. I always looked at look. They're gonna give me money because I'm not trying to do what Spike Lee's. If I was trying to do what Spike Lee, they could just hire Spike Lee. Right, right, right. You know, and the other thing also is I also wanted a to to get involved in a to, to create a business model that did not necessarily involve you liking me. Mm. That's a heavy one too. Yeah. Like right. we gonna do business, <clears throat> but we ain't gonna do business because you like me. Right. Which is how, which was the traditional methodology mm -hmm. in this business. Right. Traditionally, they call it was. It smoothie. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I like you. Let's go for lunch. Right. Like, nah, I like mm -hmm. this guy. I like, okay, great. John, Bob, call John, John, boom, boom. Right. For me, it was like strictly, hey, listen, and keep in mind, they're incubated, right? Mm -hmm. They're removed from the community. The community, I'm pitching them. Mm. Right? right, they know Spike's community. Right, because they've been dealing with Spike, and Spike is reaching large hordes of black people and women. Call with me, I go to you and I go. Listen, you know the DVD market. You know I can make this movie for a hundred grand, and, and I look at the numbers. I mean, we sell it for half. We make half of that. There you go. Oh, that's that's exactly what. Wow. That's what it was. <laughs> it was that method before that. Right, and I didn't because, even. But what they say, what don't I say? You can't make the what they tell them. You can't make a movie for your neighborhood. Right, there's seven thousand five hundred people. That, that's right. Said, well, there's seven thousand five hundred that, that, all over that, America. That's exactly right. correct. That's right. exactly right. correct. Right. It's funny you brought that up because I remember when I was watching that movie, I was like, "Wow, <laughs> this is this is <laughs> me. This is right. me. This yeah, is yeah. A, right. you know." But I hadn't Jean Claude yeah, Dolomite. But again, I, <laughs> but again, I, I the, the Spike Lees and 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 uh, John Singletons during that era were beyond, you know, I wasn't trying to go there. Right? And, and even right. they were having trouble because even Malcolm X, you know, Spike reached out to 
so many different people to invest. Bill Cosby, Oprah, mm -hmm. you know, he couldn't get the money from the right. studio. That's he right. couldn't get that mo right. movie finished. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, That's they right. didn't want that movie to come out, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So he, he had to get outside sources. I mean, you think, like, Spike has definitely had a, a, a hard road in his, in his filmmaking when it comes to financing. Yes. You know? Yes. And, you know, but it's now... Hollywood's back on its nuts. Right, right, you know? right, right, right. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It comes back around. It, it right. definitely comes back around. Now, now, I, I, I like what you said because you made a lot of sense and our viewers, they're going to love that because you, you dropping some knowledge, you dropping some jewels here. I mean, I met you, I don't even know how many years ago. Mm -hmm. It could be 15, 16, 17. And the funny thing was, I don't know, I don't even remember how I met you. Yeah. But, just like Spike, you definitely saw something in me. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. saw a realness, a genuineness, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And you gave me a leading role. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then and then to uh, add to that, you put me on a box cover. Mm -hmm. And you don't know, countless people call me actors mm -hmm. that's been doing it way longer than me. Mm -hmm. Yo, I was in... I was, I was in uh, I was in uh, cry. Blockbuster. No, I'm not gonna cry. I'm gonna cry tonight. <laughs> not tonight. I was in I was in Blockbuster and I see you in this box cover. Mm -hmm. And they were like really impressed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I and like being being involved in that film, uh Pastor Jones, um it, it taught me a lot. Is that where you're a crackhead? I mean, I'm not even joking. That was after no, that. The House of that Grace. That was the House of Grace. That was the House of Grace. Yeah. It's great. That great, movie. That. great movie. Great movie. Man. Yeah. yeah. Great movie. But, but the, <laughs> what I'm saying is that you were... It's funny because you just said something about success. If I sell one book, boom. If I, if I write the book, I'm an author. If I sell it, I, I'm a published author who sold the book. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm already, you, know. You, you know who thinks like that? Who? Not to cut you off? Mothers. Like your mother sees sees you make you gonna cut me? Talk about I'm not. I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm no. But I'm saying though. No. But, but it, I, I think it's the same mentality because I never understood every time my mom would say, "Well, to me, you've already made it." Right. right. You know what right. I mean? Right. Because right. right. she saw me once. Right. Right. That's she right. saw me once, and I'm That's like, right. That's right. "No, nah." Like you got to be at the Oscars. Right. But she was right. You were. You had. You had made it. Yeah, because when you broke it down like that, mm -hmm. definitely. Exactly. That is one hundred percent. Right, and a lot of people, if they think like that, they will get more accomplished. Right, my, my, and my point was to to his credit of saying that I've I published the book, I sold the book, I'm an author, is that when I met John Claude, and I got that role, he was already on the next movie mm -hmm. and the next thing mm -hmm. and the other thing. I had got the other role to to the, the crackhead that you was talking about while we were shooting the other movie, right. and he was running this like studio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean for mm -hmm. all his purposes. Then, come on, Jean Claude, he got he got he got. Um, I don't know. If I, that was maybe a little bit before, but I think I came in when you did that western. Uh, the western. The, the one with uh, the the yeah. Uh, the, with the ladies, no, no not Gang of before Rose. that. I mean, after that, we did the Western with Gabe Cassius, the, the, the sweet story oh, with the music, right? And right, everything. right. That was Brothers in Arms, Brothers in Arms. And then I had did some homework and I seen the uh, Gang of Roses. Roses, Lisa Ray, Little Kim, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yo, Lisa Ray, uh, Little Kim. Stacey, Stacey, Stacey Dash, Stacey Dash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Lisa yeah. Ray, yeah. Stacey Dash, Little Kim, yeah. and one other amazing Marie uh, Matiko. She was a uh, yeah, Asian yeah. girl, yeah. I mean, right, right. just just to even like put things like that together because mm -hmm. usually you from Brooklyn we just it's about kill kill murder death kill baby mama all shit I gotta <laughs> pay these bills who would think to do a western right right you know with horses and the whole shit right. you know what I mean <laughs> wait a minute a western with horses Malik <laughs> I mean come on <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> I just say you know what I mean my, my, my point is is that we JC showed me that you don't have to wait for Hollywood right. to get your ass on the horse, to mount up. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right, you don't right. have, and, and guess what? Everybody, everyone is a phone call away. You know what I mean? You work with the likes of, is it Latoya? Latoya, what's her name? Latoya Luckett? Yeah. Is it? No, the, the artist. Latoya Luckett? Tamar Bryson? T t uh, Tatiana Ali? No, uh, the singer, Kanye West. Uh, damn, it loses me. The black girl. Oh, the little sexy black and white. No, she was with the basketball player or whatever. Tiana Taylor. Tiana Taylor. Tiana. Did you work with her? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm just saying, like 
the the mm. array of talent that you that you uh, Clifton Powell, Whitney Houston, Whitney Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking yeah. of speaking of, uh, of of which, you being able to get all these the, this different kind of talent for your films as a director, do you think starting off as an actor and being a successful actor, do you think that helped you? Acquire these different people on, on your set, or do you a lot think of people don't even one, know you in uh, one, a lot of these movies? One hundred, actually, one hundred fifty percent, one hundred fifty percent. I mean, uh, the first time I met Whitney and Bobby, actually, um, I was I was just accompanying uh, Ernest Thomas, who was Raj from What's Happening. Yeah. I was on the Warner Brothers lot and going to see the Jamie Foxx show. You know, we we're just going to go in on, and Bobby was smoking a cigarette outside. And he sees me and his lie, eyes light up and he runs up to me, goes, oh, shit. Goes, yo, there's somebody who wants to meet you. What? The? And he grabs my arm uh, you know, <laughs> and he runs me down. Who do I owe money? And yeah, runs that sense. Her and, and Roscoe. Whitney <laughs> Houston is sitting there and he goes, babe, I'm trailing behind him. He goes, babe, look who's here. Remember Malcolm X, we're just watching this. And she sees me, she's like, oh my God, I love you. Wow. It, 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 so yes, the number of people that have worked with me because I was an actor that, in movies that they liked, right. um, it definitely helped. It, there's, no, there's no question about it. I'm sure if I was just another guy making DVD movies, it'd be very, I'd be hard pressed to get some right. of the people I got in them. Um, you know, it's funny. Um, you know, so when I did Chocolate City, I was, um, it was a movie I didn't want to make, right? Um, I wrote the script. I was like, Magic Mike is coming out. I'm gonna do an all black, male stripper movie mm -hmm. and as I'm looking for financing somebody calls me up and says yo I'm gonna plug you in. and by the way I'm co-calling I'm co-calling what I'm, I'm, I'm emailing the head of home video at Universal mm -hmm. hey, I got this movie I'm doing Homer uh, he calls me back or emails me back and says we're not really in that job but maybe I can connect you with somebody Mm -hmm. I start an exchange with him, and within a short period of time, he says, I'm going to take you to a couple of investors. First investor he brings me is this, a black guy, light-skinned black guy, who, who was a mutual fund guy. And the guy told me, <laughs> and, I really, and I really want to make this movie, mind you, okay? Guy said to me, listen, I give you a million dollars to make the movie, Okay. He goes, um... You're the luckiest nigga. So... <laughs> <laughs> he take notes. That take notes. is partially true. Yeah, I'm not I'm, even going to... That's I'm, partially... I'm on, I'm on your yeah, goal. it's partially true. That's the name of his documentary. True. But, but I also <laughs> think with luck, you know, comes, comes a great deal of intuition. You know, you know I, play, I play blackjack in Vegas and... Um, I know when, I, right, and, and, you know, you could say you're lucky, but yeah. you could also say, yeah. damn, the nigga felt it that, like, yeah, yeah, right? I lost four so, times. So, oh, <laughs> so, so the guy, the, the mutual fund guy, hedge fund guy, tells me he's going to give me a million dollars to make the movie. Mm. And then he says to me, but here's the thing. You sent me a budget, and it says here you want a hundred grand to direct, hundred grand to produce, hundred grand to... <laughs> So yeah, he goes, I'm gonna give you 50 grand to direct it. I'm gonna give you $25,000 to produce it. And you, I know you got a role in there for you. I'm gonna give you like 10 grand, something like that. And, and, I, and as I was talking to the guy who hooked us up, he says, yeah, JC, so he thinks you're kind of, you know, it's a little too, what you're paying yourself. And I go, why does why is he look why did he go to there? I mean, I sent him a budget basically for a million dollars. So what does he Your care? On my yeah, why do you care if I'm yeah, I mean I put right. energy and work in it and he said, Yeah, he just thinks you're paying and I said I said, Look, do me a favor. Oh, I go, why? He goes, Oh, because he's he says it's a passion project of yours. And where am I going? I go, No, my friend, no, 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 no. I don't have passion projects. Like 
I want to make this. <laughs> it's a movie I wrote. It's not a passion project. Like I'm not, no, I didn't dream that one day I'm going to make a stripper movie. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> we're that's not, yeah, we're dying. Not, right. It's not my passion project, bro. Right. I'm, I'm, here's what I'm asking. And if he wants to make the movie, make some movie. So anyway, the guy, okay, fine, all right, boom, boom. And then he approves it, but he does it with a caveat. He says to the guy the, the, who's between us, says, but tell, I get a funny feeling. This is what the guy's telling me he said. Mm -hmm. I get a funny feeling, though, that I'm going to fire this kid during the course of making this movie. That's what he told the middle guy. Right. And he just related to me, like, right. just kind of, just be aware that that energy is in the... Okay. And, and this is private equity, or is this a guy private at, equity. A, at a bank? Private equity. Wow. Gotcha. Private equity. Wow. His cash, he, whatever yeah. he wanted to get in the film business, he had already done one successful movie mm -hmm. uh, with Universal. That's why the Universal guy hooked me up with him. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I called him up and I said, nah, I'm cool, bro. I said, tell him I'm not interested. He goes, what do you mean? He approved. I said, I'm not interested. Uh, like, uh, the one thing I've always been aware of is there's money everywhere. Like, I don't need to put myself in a position like that. A month later, I meet an independent financier. He sits down with me, two meetings, and we just sit on his porch. And he's just kind of talking about his movies, his finance. He's done over a hundred films. He used to work at a bank, white Jewish guy. Mm. And uh, after the second meeting, he goes, you know, he says, I like you. I like this movie. He goes, you know, but the thing is, I've only done one black movie. And that black movie that I did wasn't a good experience. I tried to do another one, and I didn't have a good experience. He said, so, I said, well, so well, I don't understand. He goes, yeah, so, he goes, so what I'm trying to tell you is, my experience with black people, black filmmakers, mm. hasn't been the best. Did he say why? No, uh, he went into the stories of production issues or whatever it is. He was going to do, not, he, not was gonna do he was going to do a movie with with, with <laughs> Nelly and 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 Jazzy 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 Faye. Jazzy, Jazzy Faye. Faye and right. Jazzy Faye got robbed at the for $250,000 jewelry at drama. the Lermitage drama. and called him and said, yo, can you give me an advance so I can get the money? Like, yeah, just... N nothing to do oh, with shit. bad production, but, but, it but just, just, like, just the, the, ex the extracurricular, extracurricular activity, that comes with it, the right. bullshit. And so he said, I've had some bad experiences with black people. And I told him, and I said, you know, it's funny you say that. I said, it's funny you said that. I said, because I've had some bad experiences with white people. <laughs> so we're, we're so we're good, well, bro. We're in the same boat. So we're brother. the same boat. Right, right. Right. You don't want that experience. And from that day, and he told me this afterwards. He goes, "That's what clenched it for me." And we did six movies. Oh wow! After after th that first movie, when he made me an offer of one point five million dollars to make that stripper movie, I went to my lawyer, and my lawyer told me. I would never allow you to make, I would never say, co-sign this, this deal. It is the most, it, 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 you make no money here, you give everything away, you, you, it, it, this is horrible for you. And I was like, um, uh, You said the track record. Yeah, but I'm gonna do it though. I'm gonna make, make the movie. And he said, why? Why are you gonna make the movie? I said, because. When you deal with a person's greed, because the deal is it's very greedy, I'm gonna let you eat. But I got the recipe though. So after you've consumed a few grapes, 
You then can't feed yourself. You give them the first hit of the crack. There you go. There you, you go. The there, the you go. there you go. There you go. I'm going to give you this shit for free, bro. I'm yeah. going to give it to you. I, I'm not stupid. I know you robbing me. But guess what, though? There's going to be, and you know what? The second film we did, so we did Chocolate City 1. We did it for $1.5 million. Paramount bought it for $4 million. Uh, I made a million dollars. I made half a million dollars on that on that film, total. The sequel. Mm-hmm. He comes back to me now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I told him. Half a million. I told him. No, 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 no. I told him. I told him from jump, from jump, from jump, from jump. I sell up top. Two big I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> I knew it. I knew right. it. I hadn't even, we hadn't even finished celebrating, bro, before he came back to me and said, hey, so we need a part two. And I said, okay, I need a million dollars to oh. start the conversation. Up front. Up front, sure. bro. Sure. And he was like, what do you mean? Just bro, listen, bro, listen. Bro. Listen, bro. Listen, oh, look, look, look. listen, man. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> wow. Listen. Linda, and, Linda, and Linda, from, Linda. From that, we did Chocolate City 2. Uh-huh. We did Chocolate City 3. We did the musical that I did. We did Kinky. And and got uh, the Lifetime TV show. Right. Wow. Um, wow. And, and so my, the point I'm making in all of that is... Sometimes you 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 move from a place of desperation because desperation you don't think clear. You don't think clear mm-hmm. and sober. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. right. So you sit back and you just calculate the moves that you want to make. And and as filmmakers, as artists, uh, somebody like somebody could come tomorrow and be like, "Yo, this podcast, listen. Here's what I want to do. Boom, 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 And you're like, "Ah, oh, shit. All right, cool. We're gonna be, you know, affiliated with NBC or boom, call." But it may not be the best move because yeah. clearly someone see, and that's the other thing too. Someone sees something right. that maybe you're not seeing. Right, right, right. If you want out of desperation, you I, you're, I, you're, I'm just you're like, "All right, fuck, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, let's go." But with that, Cat Williams said. He was on the bus while his picture was on the bus. <laughs> right, right. There you go. Right, right, yeah, right, a, right, right. It's a buildup. Right. Build but up with that being up. said, if we also took your philosophy of like, who gives a shit? Let's just make some like, I, like that. Let's get something sold. Let's get something done. Not to saying that you know, mm-hmm. I don't give a shit, you know. But mm-hmm. with what you said earlier, so you know, yeah, there's the desperation part of it. Where it's like, yo, Malik, they want us. You know what I mean? Like, well, well, let's hold out. Let's see if who else wants us. Mm-hmm. You know, or let's rock. And you know, this works out. Mm-hmm. It works out. Mm-hmm. If not, we already in the game, and now we can make something else. Mm-hmm. Like, so what is the to people who are in that situation? What would you suggest? Tell the truth. Let's go to me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, again, it it all. I, I believe rooted in sort of your your own um, your your own integrity and the sense of what you believe you got. You know, um, I write a certain way. Um, my man called me up when I did uh, when I was uh, actually in the middle of pre-production on 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 Chocolate City and said, "Yo, man." You know, thing is, man, uh, uh, I, 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 you stole my stripper movie. And, 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 and you know, you got uh, Michael Jai White in the movie. I said, okay. Well, Michael Jai White did my table read, so I know that that's the way that connection came to. I'm like, Kill yourself. I'm, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, okay, listen, bro. Just go do what you do. Do what you do, right? I'm going to go do what I do. And I believe... What I do is different than what you do. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to stand on that. And that's what's going to propel me to that next level, whatever that next level is. So let's use this podcast as an example. If y'all have a vibe, y'all got an energy, y'all see where this podcast 
can go, mm -hmm. y'all have to already believe y'all made it. Y'all already, it don't, yeah. for me, it don't matter if y'all got one viewer or a million viewers like. or, or a million viewers. Right, for sure. That's, that's irrelevant. For sure. We, we have a percentage of a million. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I ain't going to so, tell you right, what the right, percentage right. is. But. Right. But, 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 but for me, that is the key. The key is, you know, I was uh, listening to, um, you know, Gilly the Kid. Mm -hmm. They got a little podcast that they right. do, a uh, uh, million dollars worth of game, game right, or whatever right. it is. Mm -hmm. Like, literally started from zero. Right. So there's no, there's no, for me, it's, it's, if it's the integrity of what it is that you, you are doing and whether you believe in it. Listen, man, if it's a hustle play, then you move like it's a hustle play. Right, All right, right. cool. Yeah, shit. Yo, we got NBC. Nigga, let's go with that. Let's get that money. Yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, bang, bang. If it's, yeah, if it's something you go, yo, man, here's the reason we create this. You know, we're going to stick to that. And, and we're not going to be swayed by this or that, if someone comes with something that makes sense, mm -hmm. let's talk. Man, Jean-Claude Lamar is dropping jewels right here yes, on the podcast. Yes, and yes, I, and I, I, I'm, I'm I've been writing shit. quotes. I wrote a Fix. quote and I'll never change it. No deal less than two mils. You heard that? Remember, you said, I'll take a mil. I don't take one mil. Wait a minute, I'll take a mil. Hold on, let's take a get away now. Hold on, let's take a get away now. Wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not, not, let's not sh sell ourselves short. Let's sell ourselves short. <laughs> like, how much are we making now? Hey, this is I'll take it. Right, right, right. The most, I think this is the best and the most informative episode we've had, if not one. Okay, so Money Making Mitch, he always give us the uh, the, the meter at some some point in the, in the show, mm -hmm. and whether we're the yay or nay. <laughs> oh, this show is whack. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you. Because it's, it's either, if, if it's not entertaining, I'm not going to save my, my, my battery power. Oh, you know, right but, if he, but if he learns something, hey, right. no, which makes sense. Which makes sense. Which makes sense. So, so, so now, and, and, and you know, we probably should start to wrap it up, but, but now, being in the digital world, being where you are now, what can you tell filmmakers out there? Because, I mean, from, from what I learned, like, I'm ready to get on some cold calls and just start calling people. Right. Oh, I know a lot of people. Right. Right. But, I mean, right. Do you still do stuff like that? Do you, you know, like, what, what are some tricks of the trade that you can give some up and coming filmmakers out there that, are like, yo, man, because you already dropped a lot of gems. Mm -hmm. and, if you, and if you guys didn't learn anything, you ain't been episode. listening. Mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? But yeah, this is definitely a masterclass on, 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 on filmmaking. But what can you tell up and coming filmmakers out there? Um, well, again, there are, I've experienced several incarnations, different versions of this business. I've been able to experience and watch um, how it's developed, transitioned, moved about. So, so some of the things that worked for me early on, clearly those methodologies yes. don't, won't, won't work today. Right, right, but right. fundamentally though, um, there are some lessons that I've gotten that to this day still for me uh, uh, are, are poignant. Uh, one is the integrity part, all right? Mm -hmm. Sticking with what you know. Right. Um, it will always lead you, steer you right and trust your, your, your intuition. Um, that's more of a sort of abstract um, uh, 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 advice. Um, on a practical side, you know, I run a show in Vegas. I think I mentioned it earlier. I, I was on the on the Woody card. Yeah, I was on the Woody card. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, so the, the the our show was generating. I, I went to I went to Las Vegas and I saw Chippendales, Thunder from Down Under. And I remember walking there and going, this was maybe six years ago, and thinking to myself, all these billboards, all these like, and women come here in droves. What do black women have when they come out? I don't see any black, you know, strippers and for, for these ladies, like what, you know, bachelorettes and stuff like that. So I thought, hey, let's put one together and let's take it out to Vegas. So I'm driving from LA to Vegas on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Sunday, I'm in Vegas. I host the show, 
put my little staff together. We rent out a little theater. We hire a few dancers. And uh, I would get on in my vehicle on Monday, drive back so I can do it all over again. Wow. Uh, in a year, first year, we do $450,000 worth of business. The second year, we do $1.5 million. Got it. The third year, we do almost two and a half million. God damn it, I'm going to make this. <laughs> 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 but here's what's funny. So here's what's funny. So here's what's funny. So, here's what's funny. so then pandemic hits. Mm. Uh, Vegas shuts down. Right. Now, mind you, while I'm doing this, while I'm taking this trek back and forth, um, people here, my family, yeah, you, you make money. Like, you're a, you make, you're making movies. You're a, yeah, you make money making movies. Why are you going out to Las Vegas, driving 300 miles each way to go host a male review show? And I was like, um, because I see something here. I see a need, I see a void that needed to be filled. Supply and demand. That needed to be filled. I looked at something on Instagram today, uh, which I saved, and it was a meme. And it said, two things that will lead you to wealth. One is finding a solution to a problem. One will lead you to wealth. The other thing is finding a void and filling it. Wow. Those two things. Wow. And it hit me because that's been my entire career. Right. It, right. It, it's, it's, it's less the figuring it out part, the puzzle, more the void and mm -hmm. filling the void. So f what I, the advice I would give to emerging filmmakers is... There are so many stories and so many things that are not being told. Right. Find it. Mm -hmm. Find it. I found a World War II book, a book about a young Haitian guy uh, in the 1940s who the only black man found, discovered in a concentration camp in Nazi-occupied uh, Germany. Wow. That book was optioned. I, I optioned the book. It cost me like six grand to option the book. I then took the book, sold it to Universal. Wow. So I'm executive. And John Boyega wow. is set to star. John oh, Boyega right. is set to star. Wow. And it's Damn, a focus for But my, my, <laughs> my point is, it was a project. It was a lane that nobody right. was like, I'm not, I wasn't looking to do another romantic. I, I'm not interested in those movies. See, but with that, people, a lot of people don't know is that a lot of Jews that when they escaped uh, Germany, hey, was definitely- 150%. Was, was, uh, there, there are so many, so many Jews in the Caribbean islands that have, that, that when they escaped Germany, mm -hmm. that's where they posted up. 150%, but let me tell you why that story is so poignant. It's so poignant because We've seen the Jewish Holocaust story. Right. A thousand times. From every angle. Right. Mm -hmm. For sure. But that angle. Mm -hmm. Like there were black people in, in the concentration yes. camps. Bro. Right. Um, if you think there wasn't, who, then, then you're bugging. Who, by the way, this particular man helped save. He was the black Schindler if there wow. was one. Yeah. Wow. An amazing story. Wow. An amazing story. But, but, but again, it, it's, it's to your, your question. It's finding those stories and those avenues of stories that, like, a guy came to me the other day. I got a meeting about it tomorrow. He wants to attach me to direct this movie, and it's about the New Orleans riots uh, during the early 1900s. And, you know, I read it. A decent story. Decent story. But I felt like as I was watch, reading it, I felt like I've seen that story seen before. Right. I've seen that story. Mm -hmm. But here's a story I haven't seen. Yeah. I read somewhere recently that Central Park 
Uh-huh. Used to be. Uh-huh. Yeah, was originally a black neighborhood. A black community. Right. A very, a very, a big, very, very big black community. Thriving. That was a, I also wow. found out, this was recent, I, I you know. Yes. Manhattan Beach. Yes. Yeah, owned by a black couple. Yes. Was called. Shit. Uh, I want to yeah, say yeah, what? Manhattan, Manhattan Beach. Beach. Manhattan Beach yeah. was originally called. Oh, no. I just gonna find it. No, I just do, do you know that one percent of Manhattan Beach is black? Seventy-eight percent of the people that get pulled over are black. I, I would imagine that. I'd you imagine. I'd, uh, I'd imagine that. I yeah. I just saw that. But but yeah. but but they Manhattan Beach was owned by a black Bell. couple. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. No, it was something else. A black couple. They bought the beach for blacks who could not own beach property. Wow. Then the government, After through they, eminent domain, yes. mm-hmm. they kicked it them it. out. But you know what's funny? And then, you know, and then, then the the Bruce. Bruce. But you, you know what's funny? Yeah, the Bruce's. The Bruce's. The Bruce's. The Bruce's. Bruce couple. Yeah. Now you know what's funny about that? And, that, and that's a great story. No, you, you, know, you know what's funny about that? Me and Cisco is. You might as well say that's Manhattan Beach. You might, you might as well say that. Rock, what was it? Rock, Beach? What is rock, it? Rock, 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 the big Rock, Rock, the big Rock, Rock, like almost like it's almost like something they're drawn to. Oh. This, this, no, you know what I'm talking It looks like um, 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 tailgating. Right. It, it looks like exactly. tailgating. It's almost like it's happening. They weren't even on the beach. They were in the park. Right. And it's impromptu. Wow. It's almost like the spirit is bringing moving them to moving this moving beach. It, but got it. Got but it. We used to own this beach once wow, upon a wow, time. Wow, wow, it's wow. so ill yeah. how things work out yeah. like that. I, I mean, Central Park. Mm-hmm. A lady called the cops on a black guy and the dog. He told her the right thing. It's like. Right, right, right. This is my land. Yeah. A lot of people. See, see, and, and, and exactly what you said. If you guys aren't aren't listening, he's talking about filling a void with stories. Because I, you know, as an actor, I get a lot of stories sent to me, a lot of scripts, and they're like, "Yo, oh, we want you to play this part." And I'm reading, and it's like it's just an, a, the, another hood story, right. another another bank robbery. Oh, but now we did it like this, another mm-hmm. gang story. You know what I mean? And you know, we every story's been told. It's just how you tell it. Right. But now you gotta go even deeper. You gotta go deeper. You gotta go, you gotta deeper, go deeper if just telling the same story your way. You right. gotta find there, there's there's so many different stories to tell. You know what I mean? Which one are you guys gonna tell? Right. Right, you know right that's I mean? real, that's real. Now also I wanted to I wanted to speak about you you have a channel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Oh, black woman. Black channel. woman. Yeah, the black woman channel. Can you tell us about it? It's basically I, I realized at one point that 80% of my repertoire, my film library, films that I've either produced or directed, were about featured uh, lead protagonists were uh, all black women. Mm-hmm. And um, what's, what's the know, name of the channel? The Black Women Channel. Black Women Channel. Okay. Dot TV. Yeah, Dot it's, TV. it's a streaming, it's an OTT site. And um, so we launched it with a lot of my films, a lot of some other content. And... Um, uh, we it's a soft launch. Um, it's funny you say that because t- just on my drive over here, mm-hmm. a good friend of mine, Stefan Belafonte, called me up and said, "Listen, you know, uh, I'm speaking to Fubu because they're about to, you know, Fubu's about to launch a TV network, Damon John, from Shark Tank, about to uh, launch a TV channel, and they want to partner up with your 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 channel." Um, going back to again. Like what's the value and do you do you do it do you not do it do you right. believe in what it is you're building um, but it's a channel for women um, and uh, you know it's for all women but it's it, it, all the content on there kind of like features. a BT her it's like BT her correct gotcha. um, and um, and uh, it's a sub- subscription based it's not expensive it's like two dollars a month and um uh, twenty dollars for the entire year. It's nothing. Uh, it's nothing, you know. And 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 we made it. We created it. Uh, right now, it's got almost. Um, you know, it's got it's got quite a bit of content on 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 the channel right now. Um, and you know, we're rolling. We're doing a soft rollout now. Uh, kind of working out all the kinks and stuff like that. But we've gotten some great subscriptions, and people have subscribed. Um, and they're enjoying the experience. 
et cetera. But I, I wanted to get off of that for one second. Just this was the point I wanted to make earlier about the show. So the Vegas show. So so the world shuts down and no one's making movies. No one's making boom, whatever. Um, and I'm like, oh, that thing there, you know, Instagram. Let's 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 go on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And my partner's like. I'm like, no, there's a way to do it, right? We'll make it PG-13 because what we're selling is not sex, right? We're selling an experience, fantasy. 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 That's what we're selling. So, so let's curtail it so it fits their guidelines, their community guidelines. And uh, my, my partner was like, well, we charge. I said, no, not yet. We don't have to charge. Let's make it free. And what about the dancers? Well, the dancers can get tipped. Mind you, we in Vegas, I pay a dancer, they work part-time. I pay them $500 a week. Um, uh, they work two, three hours, two and a half hours, okay, a day, a night, for four nights. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They make 500 bucks. And all their tips mm. they keep. So they make $1,000 every two weeks, essentially, mm -hmm. and whatever their tips are. So we decide we're gonna go online. So we go online, first night, first dancer goes up, does his thing, puts his little cash app up, <laughs> calls me up. He does like two and a half, three minutes, three minutes. Yeah, about three minutes. Calls me up, it is, yeah, if you're dancing in front of the thing, three minutes a long time. Calls me up and he's like, <laughs> she tells a story. She tells a long story. Long story. So, 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 so he calls me and he goes. He goes. So first dancer calls me up and says, "Yo, I just made three grand. Where do I sign up?" What the hell is he doing? No, I just made three grand. Really? I gotta go. Yeah, yeah. He said, "I just made three grand." Next answer. It's like two minutes, three minutes. It's cash out. Like $1,500, $1,600. But, uh, these guys, so we've been doing it now online for since, uh, I'd say, say April 1st. So around April. So from April to now, we've generated somewhere in the neighborhood of $150,000 wow. online. Uh, and, you're, and you're the host on this show? Uh, the, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. show. Yeah, I, I host it. Yeah, I host oh. it every year. But, but, but what's, what my, the point I want to make is, going back to what advice would I give, is that you create something and you, if you are a filmmaker, this podcast, mm -hmm. you're always going to find, and that's the thing that the digital revolution has, has created, I talked to a CBS executive yesterday who was like, we were talking about uh, that uh, a SWAT, mm -hmm. a SWAT show with uh, Shamar. Shamar. Mm -hmm. And I go, well, how's the ratings on that? And he goes, um, oh, th th it's soft. He goes, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a new world now, right? CBS, CBS, CBS. But well, let me tell you, right? So, so a show like SWAT on CBS uh, 10 years ago, 30 million, view, 30 million right. viewers right. every Easy. single week. Easy. That's, that's Easy. normal, Easy. normal. Now, if they're at a 1.5 million share, if they get 1.5 million viewers on it, they're, 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 right. eating, they're doing backflips, right? right? Wow. So that's what they mean by, so if the show dips to like a million, they're not gonna cancel the show. They need, they need, they need the, they need the content. They need still a million. They need a million. Right, right. And they, they have CBS All Access, and they, you know, they cross collateralize it, but the point is, the point, right, overseas, exactly. So, but the point is, we're in a new digital world now. And what it's shown us is, everybody can get a piece of the pie. The audience, it used to be a monopoly, bro. Hollywood was a straight up monopoly. Now, now, now they're looking at podcasts like yours and going, okay, well, how the hell do we get a million people to come watch our shit? That, that's 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 where they're at now. They're in that world. BET BET has a show on um, American Soul. Uh, one of them, yeah, American yeah, Soul, American, American Soul, American Soul, yeah. whatever those shows are. You know, if they if they get three hundred, four hundred thousand people watching that show, they're happy. They're happy, yeah, right, wow. right. 
They were excited. excited. But, you know, because the world has changed. The world has changed. 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 Because if you're on YouTube and you got 300, 400 viewers, Come on. which you can actually see in real life, in real time, because when you see these different shows, you don't know how many people's watching it. Only they do. But so when you got YouTube you're, shows you're, you're, and you got like, yo, yeah, yeah, well, I got, you know, 400,000 viewers. I can go to a, a sponsor and be like, well, you know, I got 400,000 viewers on each episode. And they be like, Oh, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it goes, it goes back to what I was saying about the um, the show, the week with the dancers on, online now. You know, it's like you're, you're making that kind of money, and there aren't, you know, we're talking about 400, 500 women in a room. We're not even talking about millions, millions. Yeah. Uh, that you're not talking about that. So, 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 so. Whether it's a podcast, whether it's a uh, online strip show, whether it's a uh, women call, yo, you put that damn tip jar out, man, and be like, listen, this is my art, this is my create, this is what I'm creating, and if you support it, hit that cash app, bro. Just, right. just, you know what I'm saying? All those grapes that, are gonna to, make wine. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's facts. Right. That's exactly that's facts. Right. That's facts. And so, and so, you know, we now. Um, uh, do really robust, really good business without without me having to drive out to Vegas, right? right. I, I'm not, obviously, I can't now. Um, but but it, it goes back to this idea that if you believe in something, you see where it's going, you invest the energy and the time to build it. If you create it. They will come. They, they will come. come. Right. Yes. There you go. Kevin Costner. Yes. 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 And, and, and you know what? On, 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 on that note. I mean, real quick before you end it. Is your, for all the filmmakers out there that's going to watch this, because we got 49 solid viewers. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. He's left out for a million. Network, are you doing acquisitions? Or are you doing original programming? How are you accepting... Um, Content. Right. So we're about to do, and this was interesting as well. There's a good question because um, that was our first thing. I was like, all right, great. I've got like, you know, 40 films on there or 30 films or whatever it is. They're my films. So, okay, great. I got that covered. Now, how do I go out and acquire more content? And so I was talking to my lawyer and I, I call him up and I go, you know, Arnie. Arnie, 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 yes. short Jewish yes, guy. Yes, yes, so yes. I call him. I go, Arnie, listen, man, you know. That's what lawyers are. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> and, Arnie, and Arnie also owns a company called Lightyear Entertainment, and he owns a right. library right. of films. And I said, Arnie, you know, I'm, I've got this channel. I'd love to get some content. And he goes, Oh, he goes, that's no problem. He goes, You know, also, I've got a friend of mine that has a catalog of about five thousand films, and um, I'll speak with him. And he'll give you some of his films to put on your channel. And I go, how much do I have to pay him? He says, oh, he'll do a rev share thing with you. And what, and, and, and which is, again, when I say different versions of the business, right. there was a time, you want, you want films? You got to, you know how much money, go to a film festival and go fuck over $2 million to go buy. Now, a guy can have a movie, okay, license it to Netflix, license, getting a piece of rev share, then put it on Amazon Prime, getting that, give it to you to stream through your podcast if you're making money, then give it to, it's all sort of like one big free-for-all, everybody is trying to monetize their content. Wow. And so it's no longer, the exclusivity window right. is a thing really of the past. Real talk, and, and you know, I, I just got my cut from my rev share today. <laughs> no, 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 actually, actually really, I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not even joking. I helped get a film on some platforms, and they made they made their first right. dollars, right. and I got right. my little cut right here. Right. 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 This is your question. Go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh. Are, are you guys doing acquisitions? Oh, oh yes, I'm sorry. So, so um, we're doing all of it. So there's, you know, he, we're original gonna, programming. We're, original programming. We've got. If you go to the site, you'll see some of the coming soon stuff, trailers and stuff that we've got a product that we want to create. Um, and then we've got um, we've got uh, this hookup with the, these film suppliers. So if I got a movie. I just directed a movie and it just got ended. I mean, they just got edited. Mm -hmm. 
if we came to you, we could talk acquisition? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, Rev share and exactly how that would work. Exactly. Because, you know, we have a fairly uh, decent subscriber base, right? Um, and, you know, my sense is it's a market and a niche that is needed. Mm-hmm. It's going to continue to grow. Right. Um, I just think about Issa Rae and Black and Sexy TV. Right. Right. There you, you go. That, I mean, look at where she is now. Yeah. Look, look at where she is right. now. Right. right. That's, that's a sure. very good point. And that's why I wanted to say, you see, you see, the people at home, they're going to say, Mitch, that's unfair. You got the man right here. You're talking about a deal, and you may go off the camera and make a deal and shake hands. But, but guys, really listen. Really listen to what's going on, because this will... Eliminate racism. We have to put our minds together, fill those voids, and you won't be worried about the white man won't give me the white man. You understand? It is very no. I, 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 I kid you not, because this is what it's all about. Real shit. This power and information. Real shit. We are thirteen percent of the country, and we are seventy-eight percent of the consumers. Facts. Facts. There you go. Facts. Right. Always money making Facts. miss, spitting the jewels, dropping the jewels. Right. But on that note, we here. We, Yo, we, we, got, we got food. You know, JC don't eat chicken. Uh, don't, don't worry about the uh, the I mean, hey, I, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I fried up some catfish. Catfish. <laughs> 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 you catch a little great, good, little great things. Okay. Hey. But you know, and, you know, and, and, and it's a beautiful thing to have a uh, Haitian bread drain on. Oh on, yes, on, yes, on, man. On show, yes. Man. So you, you told know. me you you. What, you have Haitian in your family or not? My, my, my nana. Oh, was it? Hey, my, my, oh, my father's mother is oh, wow, Haitian. Wow, wow, wow. His father wow, is Puerto Rican. Wow. My mother is tr- from Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, so, so you are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got him, Jay. I got him, Jay. Let me whoa, test him. Whoa, whoa, I got him. I got him. I got him. Somebody <laughs> say, Babule. Yeah. What did you say? No. Babule. No, it's just the mic. It's 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 the mic. <laughs> it's the It's the reverb. Yo, yo, guys, you're watching the Acting Up Podcast with our guest, John Claude Lamar. You know what I mean? I am Malik Barnhart. Yes, you are. This is uh, Cisco Reyes. Yes, sir. Um, Jean Claude, where can people find you? How can they get a hold of you? Um. If you come out to Vegas and see the show, <laughs> you know, um, I'm I'm actually oh, I'm on Instagram at Jean Claude Lamar. Okay, um, I'm on Instagram. What's the name of your show in Vegas? Black Magic Live. Okay, and then you it's have called. your web, your uh, your streaming site, which is uh, uh, BlackWomenChannel.tv. BlackWomenChannel.tv, yeah. and you know it's. Man, this Cisco is never wants to leave the show. No, this he is, loves the show so much. He this, this, loves this show. I, I, I really do. I really do. This is this is. He's been, gonna hire me. A, Come out to Vegas and see. Don't yeah, 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 yeah. If you guys want to see money making bitch and side guys trip in Vegas or on Instagram, you know what I mean. If you guys want to give them your five dollars, then. Follow us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, everything, all your favorite listening platforms. You know what I mean? Thank you for your support. We love you. And today, you have definitely been schooled. (laughs) Yes, sir! What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's good with you? I hope you guys learned so a lot of stuff out there. That was very, very dope.